Right, the Firefly 6S, gyro image stabilised, 4K action camera. What's in the box? User manual, camera in its waterproof case, some Velcro straps, a couple more straps for securing it to various things, a small mount with a quarter inch screw thread on the bottom, little bracket, mounting bracket, little bracket that goes on that mounting bracket, mount clamps with sticky backs for putting on sports helmets, backpack clip that I usually secure the cameras to my open face paragliding helmet with, micro USB charging lead also used for downloading your videos and stills to your computer, handlebar mount, another mount for the camera, I assume this one's probably at 90 degrees for the other one. Sticky pads with a securing loop in stainless steel wire, cable ties, another mount, this one's quite a short one, lens cleaning cloth, the battery, a lead for plugging in for FPV use, which I believe a lot of these cameras are used for, it's compatible with the GoPro gimbals on quadcopters, etc. And finally, a little lens cap. Right, let's get the camera out of the case. First thing I've got to do is charge it and then put in a micro SD card. It will take up to 64 gig uh, and they recommend class 10 or above. So, to open it, flip the catch. and open. Well, that was a bit stiff, no doubt it'll ease up with use. Pop the camera out. Oh, while we're looking at this, there is a protective film over this screen there, don't forget to take that off. Looks just like the 5S, and I'd imagine has many of the same functions. A major difference with this camera is it has gyro image stabilization. I've been really looking forward to testing this. Right, first off, because I like to look after cameras, I put the lens cap on. Second job, pop the battery in. Flip open the battery cover on the back here. And if you look at the battery, you'll see it's got three little slots there, which will coincide with three little tags inside the camera case. There's the tags, there's the catch, slip it in gently. You can feel when it slid in and on the catches. Catch back in. Clip in, okay. I'll turn it on. In fact, the battery's showing half charge, but the first thing I'm gonna do is give it a good charge. If it's anything like the 5S, they suggest two to three hours. And the blue charge light goes off once it's fully charged. But it's also telling me there's no card in. Pop in the micro card. Goes in this little slot here. Which way around is it? Not that way. Don't force it. You'll know when it's right because it will go in very easily. If you try and put it in the wrong way, it sticks out. Right, so when it's... If you put it in properly, you should just go in with a click. Plug in the charging lead. Like so and you'll see the blue lights come on on the front. Turn the camera off and now it's just charging. It will charge quicker if you turn it off. It will still charge even if you leave it turned on. Once the blue light goes off that's fully charged and they suggest give it a good two or three hours but anyway you'll know when it's charged because the light will go off. I always make sure I put the lens cap on these cameras with wide angle lenses because it's quite a, a dome of a lens and if you lay it down and you're not careful, you could scratch the front of the lens, so worth putting the lens cap on. So, let's see what happens once it's fully charged. Right, while this is charging, let's just have another look at some of this stuff. I mentioned this little um, 
open frame case here and the backpack clip the way these kind of accessories clip on all these accessories is via the bracket like that which slides into these sticky mount brackets like so easy to use and then of course cameras are fixed on with this thumb screw and it's all pretty obvious really but anyway thought I'd mention that the other thing I mentioned was the backpack clip which is designed to go on this and I think it's a very useful bit of kit because you can strap it onto a chest strap chest strap on a paraglider or on chin strap it's lightweight so that clips on like so and we'll just clip on with the camera mounted inside as far as the cameras go I've got here the Firefly 5S much the same size and I'm, I'd imagine quite a similar set of functions although as mentioned this does 4k whereas this is only a 1080 camera and also the special feature of this is the gyro stabilization also the same size as the SJ7000 but of course one major difference is the SJ7000 has screen on the back whereas these little fireflies just have the OLED on the front to tell you what function you're in so the choice is yours really with all these cameras whether you like a screen or whether you're quite happy just to point it and with a wide angle lens mostly and for action work you don't really know what you're shooting anyway until you look at the footage what else to say the manual in Chinese and in English as I'm English there's a Q code there for the app that goes with it I'll mention more about the app in a minute looks pretty clear runs through all the functions which I will mention briefly but it will shoot video resolution 4k at 24 frames a second 2.5k at 30 frames a second 1080 at 60 frames a second or 1080 at 30 frames a second and 720 at 120 frames a second plus VGA at 30 I don't know how many people use VGA time-lapse cycle recording so you could use it in a car USB power up auto record so you could use it for loop recording as a car camera wide dynamic range which allows it to take pictures better in the dark it will take 11 photographs in one second in burst photo mode continuous photos which means you can set it up when you're doing something and it will just take a continuous stills at 3, 5, 10 or 30 second intervals adjust the film speed or ISO as it's called from auto to 1600 sharpness adjustment color adjustment standard or vivid timestamp you can turn on or off TV output so you can plug it into your TV Wi-Fi remote turn on the Wi-Fi and it will talk to apps on a tablet or a phone and allow you to control it or watch what's happening on your tablet or phone USB auto power off you can adjust the angle of view from large medium to small uh, the menu allows you to format the card and finally factory default setting I'll run through how you use the menu in a bit oh you've also got something on here turn on to reduce the fisheye effect plus also obviously turn on or off image stabilization but I also noticed on the website before one before I do anything with it I've got to update the firmware which apparently all I do is download the firmware from the Gearbest website copy it to the micro card put the card in the camera turn the camera on and it will automatically load the new firmware turn the camera off take the card out delete the firmware and put the card back in and that should have updated the firmware right well that appears to have worked version 2.1 is obviously the latest version of software must admit it didn't work the first time I copied it it says copy it to the root directory instructions are good on the website download the firmware copy it to the root directory which basically means the empty card um, and then turn it on nothing happened the first time but the second time the lights 
the blue light flash to show that it was actually installing a new firmware and then eventually it turned off and, re and turned itself on again. Um, so now I'm going to turn it off, remove the card and they say remove the card and delete the firmware. Of course otherwise every time you fire it up it's going to install the new firmware. Be back in a second. And yes indeed, having installed the new firmware, plugged it back into my computer, deleted the bin file which is the firmware update and I'll put the card back in. And as I say, it's pretty obvious which way it goes, you don't want to force it. If, if it comes, if you put it like that and it's not going in, it's because you've got it the wrong way around. So turn it around that way, so the black side is towards the lens and the front of the camera. Get your fingernail on there and very carefully pop it in, just like you do with any micro card. Right, let's turn it on. And here we are in video mode. Right, let's have a closer look at the operation of this camera. First off, two little sockets at this end. One is for plugging in the USB charging lead or to download the videos to your computer or alternatively you could download via Wi-Fi to a tablet or computer or phone. The other socket is a mini HDV which allows you to connect the camera to your television and view videos and so on. The micro USB is also used to attach the FPV flying lead but I know nothing about FPV so please don't ask me. Little slot in the bottom for the micro SD card up to 64 gig and class 10 or higher is recommended. On this end two little buttons for scrolling up and down through the menu. On the front here we've got the on off button and on the top the shutter button which is also used in conjunction with the menu to change settings. Right so to turn it on press the button on the front and you are immediately in the last mode you're in, which in my case was camera mode. Press the button briefly again, you're in video mode. So you can see a little image of the video camera, press it again. You're in camera mode, you see a little image of a still camera. Okay, well I'll leave it there, video mode. That's the shutter release button on the top, if I press it, you'll see the blue light on the front is flashing and the blue light on the top, so there's no doubt when this is recording. Press it again, stops recording. If I press again, I'm in camera mode. One press, and as you can see, I just took a still. Press it again, I'm back in video mode. Okay, now let's see how you scroll through the menu functions. Just on the end here, you've got these two little buttons to scroll up and down. If I press one, you'll see the tool symbol come up and I can scroll through the menu options which are size press the shutter button and, I, and it gives me 4K, 2.5K, 1080 and so on and I can scroll through those select which one I want, let's say I want to change it from 1080 to 720 select 720 there give it a short press and now I'm in 720 120 frames a second mode so you've got size, you've got software version, you've got default which will take it back into factory settings, format, let you format the card, angle which enables you to change the angle of view from large to middle, USB which is for use when you use it as a car cam, Wi-Fi, on or off, if I turn it on now, you'll see it's telling me the password and it's now waiting to be connected. Default password as I've said in the, in the default password as I said in the Wi-Fi section is 12345678. Gyro, on or off, Remove fisheye, 
Hertz, which is whether you're on a 50 or 60 Hertz region, TV mode, NTC or PAL, date stamp on or off, RGB color, standard or vivid, sharpness, high, medium, low, film speed, ISO, auto or various, 400 to 1600, interval for shooting stills at intervals, burst mode, which will shoot a number of stills in a short burst. Size, which is the megapixel size for the stills. Wide dynamic range, which improves video when you're shooting in low light. Auto. Cyclic mode for car use, so it will record in cycles, as do car cams. Time lapse, which is pretty obvious. Time lapse. Time lapse off. 0.5, 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And back to size, a video camera and software version. Press on the front. Right, press on the front and I'm back into camera mode. It's pretty straightforward. If you, if you play with it for a few minutes you'll soon get the idea of how to change it and so that is it blue light flashing I'm recording now press the shutter button again and it's off OK, let's see how we use the Wi-Fi on this. Turn on. Scroll through the menu until you've got the Wi-Fi symbol up. Which is now. Turn Wi-Fi on. You can't see what I'm doing here. Turn the Wi-Fi on. On. Go into Settings. Make sure your Wi-Fi is on, which it is. Press Wi-Fi. Firefly has come up. The default password is 12345678. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Finished. Go. Connect. Connecting. Connected. Home. As I mentioned, Final Cam works fine with this. It doesn't want to be that way up, it wants to be this way up, which doesn't help. Firefly. Oh, now it does want to be this way up. OK, um, and as you can see, the tablet is now looking at whatever my camera is looking at. camera is looking at the video camera here we are and what does the app do this particular app I can go I can change settings sorry it keeps going sideways bit of an inconvenience back loading mm, okay go back into that again change settings I can download videos like so I can change wide dynamic range, wide dynamic range off or on. I can start this video recording remotely with this. Blue light flashing, there you go, started. And so on, but um, different apps will do different things. But as I say, this one I'm looking at here is Final Cam, which works with this.
22. This is with the wide angle. 4K. Second. This is with middle angle. Wide angle. like in a dark pub test. Pretty dark in here. And into the light. as it has been now. Just a little bit once and this video is at 1080 60 frames a second with the gyro stabilization turned on. It's just a bit murky. So I'll get a little bit of height here and then I'll head where the other guy is, just a bit along the coast towards and let's look at the glider to see the angle of view, there you go, that's always a good illustration of angle of view. Camera mounted on my chin at the moment.
and down. So, the Firefly 6S, well made, has a nice feel about it, obviously a good quality lens, this is quite a high end camera, capable of some very good results. The colours were nice and natural and the image quality very good, with a good sharp lens and an image that was sharp from edge to edge. The controls and menu, very intuitive and easy to use, and the gyro stabilisation seems to have a good effect at taking out bumps and lumps. I couldn't really see much difference in the remove fisheye effect, but maybe that's just me. Pretty decent battery life, I got an hour and 20 minutes. No doubt once it's been through a few charge cycles, it'll probably be more like the hour and a half that they claim. Good range of functions, including 4K at 24 frames a second. The online videos won't actually do the camera justice and in particular the 4K at 24 frames a second will be downgraded to 1080, 30 frames a second online and so there will be some frame blending which people have complained about but my original footage was very good. As far as my paragliding test clip goes it was a very foggy, misty, dull day and considering those conditions I thought the results were very good. Given a decent sunny day I'm sure this is capable of producing some good results. So all in all, I think um, great little camera and at a good price.